Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is James Grigson. Welcome back to our human performance webinars. This is week four. Today, we're looking at cognitive and physical testing inside of SmarterBase, the system. Just a few housekeeping notes. We love the feedback that's coming through. So the surveys that you're gonna see following this webinar and other webinars to come, also in the comment section below, if you're watching this retrospectively, are all fantastic forums where we really encourage you to put in your feedback on the actual topic today, any questions that you might have, but of course, any ideas for future webinars that you want to see. We want to make sure that we're putting out content that you want to see. So any recommendations for future webinars, we would love to see them either in the survey that we'll send out following this webinar or in the comment section. Again, if you're watching this retroactively, we're seeing a number of different countries come on board, um, people in many different time zones. We really appreciate those, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, that are able to join us at such an early time for them. Um, and a difficult time at times. Of course, we have our North American webinars, which you can keep an eye out for as well. And we're trying to make sure that, um, you know, there's some differentiating topics so uh, people aren't, aren't watching the same thing um, on a week to week basis. This theme today uh, is going to be tailored a little bit more around some military workflows. So we have invited um, a number of servicemen and women. So we want to welcome them and thank them for joining us onto this call. And Again, as always, for those that have not joined these webinars before, it's very much like any of our human performance summits, if you've been to them before, if you are a client or, or not a client. Essentially, we're going to take you through some of the workflows that we have, some workflows which we think are going to be beneficial to you, but we're not necessarily gonna get deep dark and underneath the hood. Um, so if you wanna go deep dark, you are a client, you wanna understand, or you're not a client, you wanna understand the, uh, the dark arts underneath the hood, please get in contact with your SmarterBase consultant, or you can reach me, james at fusionsport.com. So again, today we're just going through some basic workflows um, around cognitive and physical testing inside of the system. So we're gonna start on the cognitive side, and in terms of cognitive assessment, I've given the name cognitive assessment, but really it's, um, we're looking at psychological assessments within the system. So we're going to be looking at a number of different ways that we can go through psychological anal analysis and log that information into the system, whether it be subjective or objective measures, whether it be a self-assessment that the individual is doing on themselves, or whether it be a, a way to capture information where you're assessing another person. So we're going to start with a, a relatively well-known test. It's called the grit scale test. And this is done in a, a self-assessment, from a self-assessment perspective. So I'm just pulling out my phone now. This is the SmarterBase mobile application. If you're ever going to do self-assessments and it doesn't need to be in a supervised environment, I cannot stress the importance of an app-based way for you to be able to collect this information. And in our system, it's the application. So I jump into the application and I have my grid scale test here. I'm able to fill out the various different questions um, for those that are interested in, in the grid scale test itself. There's just some brief information which I'll keep here on the screen for a moment. Feel free to screenshot that and, uh, and go look at some of the research behind these questions. It's a relatively long questionnaire. Um, so you, you're going to see me scroll a fair bit, but really what we're doing in the background here is we're associating the answers to the questions to points and a, and, a, and a type of scoring methodology to be able to collate those points and give this individual their overall score. So when I refer back to this test a little bit later, you're going to see me reference an overall score um, as, as a way in which we're, we're collecting information on this grid scale test. Again, just a brief way to do a self-assessed psychological um, analysis test via the mobile. It's just a straight questionnaire um, and we're able to plug in other different questionnaires on the mobile application as well. Just as another example, um, what another psychological test or another psychological test scenario may be is if your individual walks into the room and you need to do a supervised uh, psychological test where you're watching them actually fill out the question. So typically what happens in this environment is they, they walk in, you're, you're in the room uh, and you'll put the laptop in front of them and, and ask them to fill out these questions. So in this environment, um, what they would do is navigate to the the big five infantry test. Um, this is the test we're going to use as an example, the big five. And just for some housekeeping, I am on the front page of my SmarterBase site here, and I'm just going to drive in to this enter data button functionality um, where it says big five infantry test. I'll select my individual, or in this case, they'll select themselves. 
and they'll go about filling in uh, the B5 inventory test. For those at home, again, um, if you're interested, we can see a little bit more information here. Of course, I can pass that information on to you uh, following this. It's James at Fusion Sport. But the, the difference between the big five and the grit scale from a back end functionality perspective is it is calculating um, scores based off of the answers that are being given. But it's also categorizing and breaking down those scores into scores that are going to be associated to five different personality types um, or, or you know, the big five, uh, as the name would suggest. So I'm just filling out some examples here to show you that if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, what we have is just some calculations happening in the background, which are associating the scores that are given to the to points, which are then going to be put towards uh, a score out of five for their personality traits out of the, the big five that we have here. So 1.13 out of five as an example. And of course, these scores aren't too high because they haven't completed the test in totality. But this is just a nice way, uh, a different way to look at a objective psychological analysis test and just understand different ways that we can collect information. Um, of course, we're looking at the direct answer itself, but then putting in some calculations in the background to collect some of that objective uh, information to then be able to do some comparison against others or against norms. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So I'm just going to navigate back to home again here. I'm on my home page. And for example's sake, I've got my different tests, which I'll be covering today at the top and some of my, my favorite dashboards down the bottom. But another psychological analysis test or, or, or a way in which that we're going to analyze someone's psyche is a SCAT-5. So this is done pre, um, sorry, I should say post-concussion in this example, where if I had somebody and I'm on the field um, and they do suffer a concussion, I enter data, I go straight into who they are. And what we'll see here is some an option. Is this immediate? In my case, it is. Or is this off-field and after the fact and in, in the office later? In my case right now, it's immediate on field. So I select immediate on field and I get the various different questions which are associated to the SCAT-5 test. But what I wanna highlight here is conditional visibility. So if I was to hit off field office, now we're seeing a slightly different version of the SCAT-5, which is more applicable to the kind of after the fact um, analysis of, of, um, of the SCAT-5 test. So just to highlight in here, we have conditional visibility within the form to make it a really nice streamlined workflow to mean that we only need to go into one form and we can just select between the two different scenarios. And of course, as we scroll down, we'll see the basic uh, SCAT five questions, elements of yes, no questions, rating out of five and some clinical notes for note taking. So that, that is really uh, just some examples of self-assessment self or me analyzing somebody else and ways in which we can do that within SmarterBase. Those were very, objective tests and some of the other objective tests that we've seen done in the, in the system is just your uh, general uh, sorry your depression anxiety stress scale the general anxiety disorder tests um, but really from a objective perspective we have plenty of clients which go through sports so whether it be sports psychology or just general psychology and they're just taking their clinical notes and those notes are being associated with an individual that's being stored against their profile and of course, the individual can see those notes if you allow them to. Um, but mainly what ends up happening is only the person who logs, it, logs those notes can see those notes, especially when it comes to mental health and psychological analysis. Uh, the roles and permissions are crucial. And we want to make sure that the people that are conducting those tests are the only people that are allowed to see that information. Of course, if you want to share that with maybe one or two other key stakeholders, you would be able to within roles and permissions again. From a com comparison and visualization perspective inside of these cognitive tests, I'm going to direct your, your attention to um, this dashboard, which I'm about to pull up here. What we're looking at in this analysis is the, uh, the visualization of the grit scale test, which is the one I did on my mobile. And there's also going to be some visualization of the big five infantry infantry test, which I did on my computer just before. Typically, our clients won't have both different types of tests on the one dashboard. But just for example's sake, cut me some slack and I'm going to be showing you both in the one dashboard. Um, like I said, today I'm, I'm flying solo. Normally, I have a SmarterBase consultant with me, um, but Jordan Beskenfeld did, did fall ill and wasn't able to, to join me today. But I do have some of his notes around this visualization piece. And one of the most important things that he was going to highlight is the use of colors, not only in the dashboard, but across the rest of the site. Um, 
when you're setting up your site and you're an administrator, you're a key stakeholder, understanding the use of colors to drive your users' attention to important information is paramount. Having nice theming, consistent theming, um, and use of legends, which we'll get to in just a second, to really drive the attention of the user to where you want their attention to go is absolutely crucial. So just some examples of this here is, is we're highlighting reds, obviously the theme of this entire site, as you'll see as we go through, but we'll see some use of red here for understanding where um, different, different separations of visualizations are, really highlighting where tables begin, um, this total individual score, really pushing my attention here, really pushing my attention to being able to click onto this and see further information uh, with the use of that red icon there. All very important stuff when you're looking at building these types of dashboards. So if I was to, if I wanted to see my uh, various different individual scores for this grid scale test, I would just navigate using the filter here. And another piece from Jordan that he's mentioned, and you can see as I'm toggling through, is the use of pictures and basic information, especially in these larger groups. Um, you, you can't undervalue enough the use of these photos and, and some brief details, personal details about these individuals. It's much better than just name or even last name. It gives the user a bit of an understanding as to who they're necessarily dealing with. So let's say I wanted to see Noah's scores. I've selected Noah and we can see as we scroll down here, we're looking at, okay, when did Noah last take his test? Um, who was it administered by? And if I wanted to click in and see every single answer that he gave me, bang, I can click in, pop up, here's all of Noah's answers um, from, from his grit test score. And if I wanted to click in and see further information, I can. But really what we're looking at from a comparison perspective is a relatively basic comparison looking at what was Noah's total score, what was the max of the group, the mean of the group, and the min of the group as we go from left to right. And we just get a basic understanding of where he sits. Nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy, but that's all we can really do with this type of data set. Um, and what we can do if we just wanted to compare Noah against somebody else is just an eye test here. So I want to see where Noah compares against Susan. Bang, Noah's at 3.17 and Susan sits here at 3.42. So that's the grid scale test. Again, nothing, nothing too fancy, but it's the simple stuff done well with the use of colors um, and, and some enhanced usage of personal details, which really make, you know, yes, it is a simple workflow, but it looks incredibly simple when you put these little nuances and put these little um, features into it to make it really, really user friendly. Coming down to the big five infantry test, this gets a little bit more exciting because we have more data. So if I'm, I'm just gonna change from Noah to let's say Jane, right? So what we can see here is the big five test, again, spits us out five different scores. So we have more than one data set to work with, which again, gets me a bit excited. I'm, I'm really happy with this. We get some basic information here at the top about the test, but now we've selected Jane at the top, if you recall, and we can see her five different scores um, based on the, the answers that she gave during the, the big five test. Because we have more data sets, we can really start to play with some of the visualization features like this radar chart. So plotting out the five different personality traits here, looking at where Jane is in the uh, yellow, but then looking where the group average is here in blue. So we can understand where Jane may be um, either, where Jane's differences lie amongst her compared against the group. There's no reason why we can't plot uh, Jane in yellow, the group average in blue, the, the group mean in, um, sorry, the group max in red, the group uh, minimum in, in purple, uh, or even look at just what was Jane's score this time and forget the group, what was her score last time? So how has she, how has she gone um, now compared to where she was when we first tested her? And then of course, similar to what we had above, just basic scores um, and, and comparison from, okay, what, how did Jane go uh, compared against Thomas? Or how did Jane go compared against Susan? And just being able to analyze it in that way. So just from the examples that we have today from a cognitive testing perspective, um, that kind of completes our wrap up here with the cognitive testing. And I'm now just gonna transition into physical testing. From a physical testing perspective, there's a number of different ways we can get data into the system. I'm gonna go through some of those today. The first thing I wanna highlight is an example here whereby somebody comes into your environment there, it's only one person testing at a time and we need to record that information. And in this example, we're, we're going to be looking at the army combat fitness test and we're going to be um, using that as our example. And in that example, it is going to be used off the, the, the laptop 
And again, the individual comes in one at a time and they're all being tested one at a time. So if I want to add that information in, we're imagining our people, our individuals come in to be tested. I would enter, hit enter data. I would select who's coming in to test. And I would get to see the test itself, the form itself, as we can see here, um, and, and the various different cells for me to put in the information. Before I go down to the, the actual form itself, I really wanted to highlight the use of instructions up here. A lot of our consultants, and there's a note here from Geordie, a lot of our consultants now are really making sure that they're putting in clear instructions, collaborating with the, the client themselves to make sure that we get out some nice, clear instructions to make sure that your eventual end users know, okay, what's this test about again? Okay, what do I need to do? What's expected of me? Oh, how does it run again? Let's actually put a, a video in here at the top um, so our, our testers can rewatch and refresh, um, understand what's required of them, and then go about filling out that information. What I'm just going to do is actually jump back and uh, pull up a, a pre-filled out combat fitness test just to give you an idea as to how that, all inform that information looks when it's all filled out. So this is how we would go about filling out some of the information. This is relatively basic, right? I click into the cell, I type whatever score I need. Um, you know, we can see basically as we go horizontally across the page, we're looking at attempt one for a deadlift, attempt two, standing power throw, attempt one and two, just a one-off test for uh, the, the push up, the sprint, the leg tuck and a two mile run basically coming vertically down the page. Now that's not what I wanna draw your attention to. I actually wanna draw your attention to, to, to the point system that's being allocated to these um, various different exercises. So we can see a brief legend displayed at the top. And all this legend is saying is if an individual lifts X amount of weight, they get given X amount of points. If they run a certain time, they get a certain amount of points. If they do as, you know, X amount of push-ups, they get X amount of points. You get my point. And what happens in the system automatically is that when I fill out this information, the points are automatically generated and shown here in the cell to the right hand side. In this particular test, it's fantastic. But from what I've seen personally at various different professional sporting clubs and Olympic institutions is there, if you want to gamify your um, testing sessions and you want to be able to come up with an algorithm or a way, and I know a lot of people do, where you might have your five basic fundamental tests, or you might have your 10 basic fundamental tests, and you go about obviously putting a, a you know, percentage of the person's body composition in, in comparison to what they're lifting, but then go about allocating the points. Then what you can do is have a really nice clear way of getting some sort of competition, engagement, and leaderboarding those points on a TV or a projector up in your gym environment, instead of writing it on the chalkboard, um, to get those athletes engaged with their point system and what's contributing to their point system and you know, why aren't I at 100? Oh, I'm at 95 because I need to run faster on my, on my two mile run, something like that as an example. So in terms of being able to, to do that in your smarter base side, if you're not currently doing that, please get in, in contact with your current consultant and they'll be able to sort you out there. In terms of just some other housekeeping for any sort of physical testing or anything where you need a, a signature to say who was there when this testing session happened or who was there when the psychological assessment happened or even if you're just signing off practical hours, if there's a practice student at your organization, whatever example, the wet signature on tablet, mobile or, or desktop uh, has been a real winner for a lot of our um, clients in the environments where they need to sign off certain things. And in, the, in this example, this test needed to be signed off. So I'm just going to jump into another example whereby, okay, we have uh, a group in front of us and they're all doing their testing. They're kind of, they're rotating in groups of five around different stations and then they're coming up to me and I've got to fill out their, their responses. So instead of going enter data for individual, I'm going to go enter data for group. I'm pulling up a different set of, set of tests here. I select who's in my testing session today. And here we get a nice table to, to begin to fill out their times, their, their reps, their, their weight, whatever it may be, just by coming in here into the cell. So you know, the swim was 220, uh, the run was five, the jump was two meters, et cetera, et cetera. So just a group entry here, um, filling out that form, hitting save and close. That information is being logged against their, their various different pro profiles and away we go. So it's a nice way to, to look at testing um, in, a grand, in a grand scheme. 
some of our combine workflows in particular for those that are that are interested we're going to do a separate series on combine so that's a very mobile tablet based environment we're going to do a separate webinar just on combines alone so you'll get to see more examples of okay i have a group here how am i going to to get all that information efficiently into my system and please look out for our combine webinar that should be expect that within the next four to six weeks we should be getting that together for you so the big elephant in the room here especially when we're talking about lifting weights um, and looking at getting getting uh, weight information into the system is the use of third-party api integrations so your likes of team builder train heroic um, bridge uh, visual coaching pro i know a lot of clients use those systems to collect that information and that's uh, of course with the integrations that we have we're able to collect that information within the smart base system itself if it doesn't exist in the, the platform that you've chosen what the system can do is look for hey was this actually a pb okay cool now this needs to be you know, this needs to go into the leaderboard calculation and give them more points as an example or this needs to replace the dashboard where i've got all their pbs and they've just done uh, a new pb in their, their 3rm squat bang that information's come in from from team builder as an example the system recognizes that it's a new smarter base system recognizes that it's a new pb for for 3 rm squat bang it's in our dashboard it's in our visualization maybe there's alerts going off to send congratulation messages um, or alerts to the strength coaches to say that uh, a new rep max has, has occurred so there's different ways that we can ingest that information and then push comms and push visualizations off the back of that um, in a number of different environments so i know people like to do their they might do their testing session inside of those third-party softwares or some don't like to test at all slash that much and they will rely on the software picking up the fact that somebody's lifted more to then spark a celebration it's not necessarily a testing session every time that then collects that information and then pushes it out so from a visualization perspective i just wanted to take our minds back to that army combat fitness test uh, and we're going to be looking at the visualization of that information which Again, if we can just cast our eyes over here, what we're seeing at the top, probably again, a really important note from Jordan that he sent through is, is the legends that are being used here. So firstly, just looking at colors. So if I'm looking across this dashboard, if I see a blue, that means someone's lifting some serious weight and they're going heavy. Gray is, is significant, yellow is moderate, and, and red is not meeting standard. So that really gives me a clear indication straight away, conditions my brain, bang, if I see any of those colors, I know exactly what they mean. And then some acronym usages as well, especially if you're pushing these reports out to key stakeholders or people that aren't necessarily in the gym environment day to day like you. Having those just is a small thing, but it really makes an impact for the end user. Um, letting them know that if they see MDL throughout this entire dashboard, it means the three rep max deadlift and so on and so forth. Crucial, absolutely crucial. So just in terms of a leaderboard that I was almost referencing before, we can see out of the 10 athletes that I had in this testing session, just by filtering this dashboard here, I know who has been lifting a significant amount of weight um, or who has, sorry, I should say, has gotten the highest score out of my group here. And if I want to categorize it for those that have not met standard as an example, I can see bank straight away who they were and, and what scores they got. Another way to visualize that here, just in a, in a pie graph for those users that, that really like um, a graphical representation of information. And then a, again, really just a, an Excel way to an extent, I should say, um, I, I would say of visualizing that information just from left to right, we're looking at every single result um, and every single score that was associated to every single element of that fitness test. So from the, the, the MDLs, which was our deadlifts, we're looking at first and second attempt, the score that was associated for those MDLs and so on and so forth with that similar format here. Um, looking at the, the sprint carries, looking at the two mile runs um, and being able to filter for those particular columns uh, being one of the key features in here. And of course, again, the use of colors. I'm just scanning over this dashboard here and I see bang a red element here for um, Lachlan. I see a red element here for, for Charlie. So I know where they've actually fallen down because if we just cast our eyes over to the right, we know that they've not met standard overall. Well then where have they not met standard? Okay, it was the, you know, in Charlie's case, it was his deadlift that, that really um, was his Achilles heel. Another uh, brief feature, which I'll go through is just filtering. So filtering for, you might've had multiple different testing sessions. You wanna look at 
um, a testing session from a particular date, or if you want to categorize those tests to say testing session one or testing session two, that's of course possible. Looking at subgroups within um, and picking for subgroups within your, your overall group or, or just looking for certain soldiers. Of course, that's all possible. One of the questions I had on the live webinar was about um, sharing this with other stakeholders in the organization. First things first, just get them a login. But if that's not possible and they're not necessarily people that are, are computer minded and they still love paper, of course, you can print these different um, dashboards out here just using this print button. So go to print, push it out and away we go if they've got a hard copy. Finally, I'm just going to show uh, a comparison dashboard. We actually looked at this dashboard. You'll notice its similarities. Last week, when we were looking at skills, uh, skill assessments within the IPP or IDP uh, webinar, which is obviously the, the week previous. So if you're interested in that, please check that out with, with Fusion Sports' Jack Halley. But this dashboard here, what we're looking at is um, using the same template but comparing different lifts or comparing different exercises slash activities than we did last week. So let me, let me walk you through this for those that haven't seen it. At the top here, what we're looking to do is select our key athlete or our, our target athlete or a target soldier or a target dancer, whoever it may be. Selecting who that is, let's say it's Alison in this example, and we're going to compare Alison here in the blue compared with everybody else in her group in the gray, just as an as a, as a off the cuff example. And we can see in terms of Alison compared to her being in the blue here, all the way down, she's in the blue, compared with the group average being the gray, she really doesn't sit too well in terms of where she, she ranks up against the rest of the group. But maybe we want to compare Alison with uh, Kathleen and we just see where Alison sits versus Kathleen. She actually does quite well. We can see Alison here in the blue, um, doing quite well against Kathleen, or if we want to compare Alison against everybody uh, in a certain squadron or everybody of a certain rank, we're able to do that. One other key feature in here is not just individual to group or individual to individual analysis, it's group analysis to group analysis, especially in a military environment. Um, there may be uh, squadron comparisons, there may be different rank comparisons um, that you may want to do. And maybe if it's inside of sport, uh, between sports, you may want to be comparing different sports and that's of course possible in this scenario here just by selecting okay we want to look at um, all the corporals as, as this example we can see three people here and we want to compare them against the, the lieutenant colonels not the best example let's grab all the majors we'll go with it and we can see where our corporals sit against our majors here okie dokie so that wraps up everything to do with, with what we're looking to do today, whether it be from the, the cognitive testing to the physical testing. Um, uh, again, if you have any questions from this webinar, please reach out to your consultant. Or if you don't have a consultant, uh, you can reach out to me. It's james at fusionsport.com. There'll be a survey coming out. Or if you're watching this retrospectively, comment below and we'll be able to answer any of the questions that you may have. And again, we would love some ideas from you guys. What do you want to see in the next webinars? That we can cover and if you are a current client and you're interested especially at this time to be collaborating with us on these webinars and coming up with topics with us and, and presenting these webinars together we would love that as well so please reach out to us if any of those and all of the above um, pique your interest next week it's thursday the date will be the 30th of april so on the 30th of april we have dr marcus colby joining us for a webinar on load management inside of SmarterBase or load management inside of your AMS. So that'll be a real treat, can't wait to have him on. That'll be at 2 p.m. again, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And then for those from the Northern Hemisphere that are interested, of course, we're doing recordings and we'll push them out um, in our various different platforms to get to you. Thank you very much for, for joining me today. Have a great day.